guaranteed rate bowl um, split here between Jared and I, and then a pretty close, um, pretty, pretty close poll for our Instagram fans. So um, they're leaning Oklahoma State. Jared is as well. So Jared, what 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 do you see out of the Cowboys this year? Uh, I think the Cowboys uh, have stuck to uh, for playing in the Big Twelve. They do seem to be one of the more physical teams in the Big Twelve. Um, and I don't know if the audience has picked up on this, but the the brand of I like to, I like to see uh, is definitely that big physical type style, um, and I like to I'd like to see that I like to see teams fly around on defense, uh, which Wisconsin can do as well. I just don't trust Wisconsin much this year coming out of the Big Ten West, uh, not winning that division uh, for a Wisconsin team. Uh, I, I can't trust you going forward into a, in a, into a bowl game like this. Obviously, the hype around the program uh, going into next year with the, the fresh hire, uh, I think will only do good things. Uh, I just don't think uh, not a good year uh, for Wisconsin this year. I like uh, Oklahoma State here. Yeah, interesting enough, you mentioned the new hire at Wisconsin. So uh, Luke Fickle coming over from Cincinnati had a lot of great uh, seasons there. We mentioned him earlier. He has actually opted to coach this game. He will be the head coach on the sideline for Wisconsin. That's a um, that's a just yeah. so the audience knows. If you don't watch a lot of college football or haven't paid attention, that's a that's a very rare move uh, in a situation like this. Yeah. So I mean, he's diving in head first. Um, you'll I think you'll see a lot of of guys on that Wisconsin team, especially some of the younger guys, sort of treating this as a their chance to make an impression. Um, so he is going to hit the portal pretty hard, I think, uh, yep. and look for some guys to come in there. Definitely, yeah. So I think you'll get the best out of all the young guys. Um, another thing to keep an eye on for Wisconsin, quarterback Graham Mertz has entered the transfer portal. He's been the, uh, the starter there for a few years. Uh, so as far for the purposes of this game, we don't know where he's going to end up. But um, his backups, are, none of them have significant game experience. I do have to caveat that with saying, um, watching a few Wisconsin games over the year, I think that actually may be a benefit. <laughs> Um, he he's not, not the same disrespectful, the but <laughs> yeah. So I I think that they're going to pound the run game. They're going to work Braylon Allen, who's their thousand yard rusher, the way that was the way that Wisconsin always does. Um, they tend to turn these guys out like a factory. But Braylon Allen's been a really strong running back. Uh, Oklahoma State's got a weak defense this year, um, especially against the rush. Rush. Uh, Oklahoma State's quarterback Spencer Sanders, who's missed a couple games through the season to injury, is actually into the transfer portal as well. Uh, luckily for them, their backup, uh, Garrett Rangel, has started a couple of games uh, while Spencer was injured. So he's got a little bit of experience. But Oklahoma State's going to have to lean on that that run game. Uh, and Wisconsin's run defense is, is the strength of that defense. So I just think Wisconsin has too many things working in his favor uh, for Oklahoma State this game. But uh, it definitely could shake up to be a really good matchup. All right, the Bad Boy Mowers Pinstripe Bowl. This one's played in um in Yankee Stadium, and these are two perfect teams, I think, to play in That's that a one. New sponsor. Too. Bad Boy had the bowl game before, but it was not this one, if I yeah, do remember I correctly. Definitely like the sound of that one. Um, but yeah, Syracuse sort of getting a, a close to home game in the state of New York down there at Yankee Stadium, and then Minnesota, another team that's that's more than equipped to play in the cold weather, but uh, we're all on the same page taking Minnesota here. Instagram fans are behind Minnesota at sixty seven percent support. Uh, the reason I, I like Minnesota in this one is, is it's just one guy. It's Muhammad Ibrahim. Uh, he's the running back there at um, Minnesota. Absolute monster. He's, he finished the season with almost 1,600 rushing yards, not counting what he's going to do in the bowl game. Um, they do have a little bit of inconsistent quarterback play. Um, Tanner Morgan is the quarterback there at Minnesota. They try to, to get the ball in Ibrahim's hand as much as possible um, so you don't get to see him do a whole lot. Uh, on the other side of things, though, Syracuse also a strong run game. Uh, Sean Tucker is, is rushed for over a thousand yards, and then their quarterback as well, Garrett Schrader, is a capable runner. Yeah, um, that's also the strength of Minnesota's defense, though. Uh, probably, I don't have the the list, but they've got to be in the, in the top ten or so in the country uh, in rush defense this year, only allowing about 106 yards a game on the ground. So. Yeah, Minnesota's a consistently top-ranked uh, defensive team in, in sort of all facets, but especially, yeah, stuffing the run there. So uh, Syracuse is kind of a tough pull here. Minnesota, I believe, finished 8-4. and four. Uh, But if you looked at their um, 
their stats by the numbers as far as what their offense and defense output is. Uh, you would think that would be a, a team competing for a national championship. It's just a tough draw for Syracuse here. But the Duke's Mayo Bowl, another fun um, brand-sponsored bowl here. Uh, you're got, a mayonnaise guy, too, in the Brownies, <laughs> baby. We're all mayonnaise guys. Uh, Maryland Terps taking on NC State in the Wolfpack. Uh, some kind of fun, interesting teams that that made a little bit of a run and a little bit of noise in their conferences this year. Uh, Maryland put up a lot, a, a couple of good fights against Michigan and some other uh, big teams in the Big Ten. Uh, weren't able to to pull off the upset on any of those, but uh, still put up a valiant effort. Uh, NC State was kind of expected to to be a little bit more this year. Obviously, a lot of that was hurt when their quarterback Devin Leary got hurt, uh, but that kind of gave way for for young uh, quarterback MJ Morris to to take the reins and he's shown that he can be quite a formidable quarterback himself. Uh, unfortunately for NC state, he's actually injured as well. And QB three uh, was, was benched in favor of QB four a couple of weeks back. Um, that's so that's good. the reason I'm going with Maryland here, Jared, I see you're going with Maryland as well. Um, if they were at full strength, I think I'd like NC state here. Uh, but again, just, just Maryland kind of being battle tested. And then uh, I, it's hard to win when you're down to your fourth quarterback. Yeah, I just really like Maryland here. They've played some really, really good football teams uh, pretty close. Uh, it took Ohio State a long time to end up the final score. It looks like they pulled away from Maryland, but that was a close game for a long time too. Um, and that was not uh, that long after the Michigan game. Uh, Maryland has some bad losses this year, uh, getting skunked by Penn State 30 to nothing. Uh, but I think – They've got the edge in this game, especially going against uh, the fourth quarterback for NC State as the, going into the season as the fourth quarterback. The uh, Music City Bowl. So uh, Kentucky and Iowa are going to meet in, in Nashville. Um, we've got a split here. The fans going with Iowa uh, at 67%. I like I as well, Iowa as well. Jared uh, has got Kentucky in this one. Yeah, another one here. Um, I texted you this when we when – we were going over the schedule. Not uh, a lot of offense. Uh, not a lot of offensive firepower um, really going to be happening in this game, um, from what I can see. I just gave the edge to Kentucky. They are a, a t- more explosive, I think, on the offensive side of the ball uh, than Iowa. Uh, but Iowa's defense uh, is probably why you picked them. Uh, so I'll let you go into that a little bit. Yeah, just being honest, I mean, the, the numbers are are plain and simple. Iowa's defense is very tough to overcome. You, you have a hard time finding times where Iowa is able to put up more than 20 points, and most of the time they don't need to. Um, so it's – honestly, what this one comes down to is I think if Iowa can kick a field goal, they're going to win. I don't, I don't see where Kentucky's going to be able to manufacture any points. Um, yeah, is Will Levis playing? Will Levis has opted out, and, and their 1,000-yard rusher, Chris Rodriguez, has also opted out. So – um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to be tough to overcome. They've got a solid receiver room. Um, I don't know what's <laughs> waiting in the wings behind Levis. I know he's missed some starts, but I haven't kept up with the team probably uh, as much as I should. Uh, but, yeah, I think the quarterback and running back uh, positions are, are going to have a huge hole, uh, and taking on a defense like Iowa is not, a, is not an ideal situation to have question marks in those areas. Yeah, I know they just brought in a new offensive coordinator uh, or made a big move at offensive coordinator for next year as well uh, for Kentucky. I do think that this Kentucky program, uh, growing up uh, in Southwest Ohio, this program in Lexington, always a basketball school. Uh, Mark Stoops, however, has gotten this Kentucky program, recruiting a lot out of Ohio um, and the surrounding areas. He's done a great job recruiting, I think, uh, to get this program to be more consistent and relevant over the last three or four years is football. Um, and I, he actually makes more than Coach Cal now, which has some Kentucky Kentucky people, including my grandmother, pretty upset, I think. Yeah, uh, they don't think he's quite earned to that, but <laughs> Cal hasn't done much lately either. So uh, The ReliaQuest Bowl, um, and this one's kind of a, you know, going to kick off on a sad note. Uh, Mississippi State's head coach, uh, Mike Leach, obviously passed away. Um, this week, uh, again, share our condolences to his family and the Mississippi State program and uh, all of his colleagues that he's worked with throughout the years. Um, but just getting back into sort of the football game here, uh, Mississippi State, uh, I, I think this is going to be a situation where you, you could potentially see, um, you know, 
one of two things for Mississippi State. Either they're going to um, obviously feel that and uh, maybe not be able to perform the way that they have uh, throughout the season, or you could see them uh, really step up and, and put forth sort of a tribute. And I, th I think you will see that. Uh, the reason I've got Illinois here is just the um, the coaching edge. I think the inexperience is going to show uh, with an interim taking on a, a battle-tested guy who's who's been a head coach at multiple levels of college football and Brett Bielema and then has spent some time in the NFL as well um, as a as a coordinator and position coach. Yeah, I, I gave the Mississippi State the edge on this one. I think there's definitely two ways. Uh, if they channel the emotion correctly, I think they're gonna, they can come out and play a really inspired game um, and play really well and be too much uh, offensively uh, for Illinois. Uh, just talent um, and, and athlete-wise on the edges um, and their quarterback play uh, specifically. But, um, yeah, this should be a good game, hopefully. Uh, that Illinois coaching staff has quite a few guys from uh, Air Force on it right now. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Cool. Yeah, and I, I think uh, America's behind Mississippi State in this one, too, so – um, we're we're all on the same page here and, and trying to memorialize Coach Leach as best as uh, as best as they can. We we get to our second cheese at sponsored bowl game here. You've got the LSU God, Tiger. They're throwing around cash. Yeah, cheese it uh, is all over it. And then you've got Purdue. Um, I'm just just to share as some things have developed. Um, I I almost wish at this point that you could bump teams out of uh, bowl games, depending on some of these headlines that you hear. Uh, so. Purdue's lost their head coach. It's nothing against them. They're they're a solid team at full strength, and I think they could play LSU well. But um, they've lost their head coach uh, to to Louisville. He went back home to to be the head coach for the Cardinals. Uh, they've lost their quarterback, Aiden O'Connell. Um, so I mean, just just looking at this team and a couple of the key positions. There's a few others as well, either entering the transfer portal or injury or whatever. Um, I just don't see them being able to to keep up with an LSU team. That, I haven't uh, seen the headline yet. Is Brom staying to coach this game, or is he out previously? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Um, I do believe he's already arrived in Louisville. I don't know if he's going to come back to coach, but um, it's it's very rare because those guys like to get out on the recruiting trail yeah. uh, and start getting their hands around the program um, as quick as possible. But yeah, I I had to take LSU here, a depleted Purdue team coming out of the Big Ten West. Uh, I mean, you saw how they played Michigan. Uh, they were able to hang in there for a little while, but uh, I think the LSU talent level will eventually uh, pull away uh, from Purdue uh, in this game. Yeah, uh, and a couple guys to watch, young guys. You've got a, a young running back at Purdue, Devin Mockaby, who had an awesome season, and then young linebacker at LSU, uh, um, Harold Perkins is a is a top talent and on the defensive side of the ball and, and sort of the freshman and sophomore classes. So um, at least a couple couple of people to keep an eye on. But again, I, I don't think this game is going to be close. The uh, the Rose Bowl game, and I think we've got a pretty good matchup on our hands with with Penn State taking on Utah. Yeah, I like this one a lot. I've uh, I kind of waffled on this one because um, honestly, I haven't seen like Penn State's been like a little up and down or just kind of just kind of quiet I guess maybe not necessarily as up and down but just a little quiet this year um and then Utah obviously starting the year off really hot uh against uh Florida down at Florida um just kind of I don't want to say let the let off the gas a little bit they just didn't have they just didn't have the gas left uh to finish the year in some big spots um, and I, I like Penn State going into this one. Yeah, and I, I like Penn State in this one too, and that's nothing against Utah. Utah is a super accomplished team. They obviously went out and, and won the Pac-12 and knocked USC out of the uh, playoff. Cam Rising, the quarterback there, is a phenomenal player, and then Clark Phillips leading the team. <laughs> I believe finished with the most interceptions in college football, or at least had that, uh, had that at one point. Um, I like Penn State here because it's a young, hungry team. Uh, Towards the end of the season, uh, freshman quarterback Drew Aller got the call. Um, they let him come up and, and finish the season. They finished with four wins. Um, they've got Abdul Carter on the defensive side of the ball and then a pair of, of two young running backs, too, led by Nick Singleton. Um, and these th this is going to be a lot of their first uh, exposure to a big bowl game like this in the Rose Bowl. So I just think you're going to get their best. 
Uh, Utah came in with some big aspirations this season um, and they finished strong, but I, I don't quite think that they probably are where they wanted to be. Um, so I just don't think that you're going to see the same level of uh, composure and um, passion in the Utah team as you will uh, for Penn State. I think this uh, this game, too, uh, for the fans out there, I think this is a big, big game for, for non-playoff bowl games. Uh, the Rose Bowl itself, especially with it still being a Pac-12 team and a Big Ten team, like there's a lot of pride still on the table, I think, for both of these schools, especially their fan bases. Uh, especially for a school like Utah, who hasn't been in as many of them uh, lately, obviously last year. But um, just getting the chance to get over the hump, I think, for Utah and win one of these um, and then eventually keep that rolling uh, if they can. Uh, but Penn State, I think, will definitely be ready to play uh, and make a statement because I think James Franklin, too, will be looking to posture as we go forward uh, for for both recruiting uh, and himself to another school potentially. Yeah, and we'll we'll continue to, to see some of those recruits play out and uh, see Penn State, you know, a young team, uh, continue to develop those those stars that they have. I'm excited to see what they look like in two years. Mm -hmm.